third thing, the pride of life is not of the Father, it's of the world. The word pride is the word aladzani, and it means self-esteem. To look to self, fulfill self, and gave it, and it, it would make her wise. Her own pride, she could be proud of her wisdom, and took of the fruit thereof, and did eat, and gave also to her husband with her, and he did eat. Now let me show you what Satan's doctrine is over in 1 Timothy. Here it is, 1 Timothy 6. Here's Satan's doctrine. He legalizes all that is in the world and he appeals to the flesh and he says smooth words and says, after all, God knows that you need the things of this life. Let me tell you, God knows, God knows what our needs are. But when a man starts making excuses, God don't mind if you have this and this, and God knows that you need that over there. When a man starts saying that, he's making excuses for legalizing everything that's in Satan's boundary line or Satan's mark. That's that little sin, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> now look here. He says, he's talking about teaching a doctrine. What have we been talking about? A boundary line, a marker. And he's talking, and it, Inside that boundary line is a law or a doctrine. The word, the word doctrine is the word didascalia, and it means instruction. Well, the instruction of God is his law. Here is the mark. Here's what's inside Satan's mark, and here is what you'll find that the message of Satan is. He will tell you that God knows you need this and this and this, and after all, you're only human. And they're very smooth words. Here it is. He speaks of the doctrine of God not being blasphemed in 1 Timothy 6 and 1. Then he says in 1 Timothy 6 and 3, he says, If any man teach otherwise and consent not to wholesome words, and that word wholesome is the word hugiano, and it means uncorrupt, uncorrupted words. Don't mix your opinions with God's truth even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to the doctrine which is according to godliness. The word godliness is the word eusebomai. It means the gospel scheme, the resurrection of Christ in us. And when Paul said, or when, the, when Paul said that godliness is profitable, the word profitable is the word ophilomos, and it means to heap up. That's the treasure and the true riches is Christ in you the hope of glory, Colossians 1, 27. Then look, at, look what he says. The man who preaches any other doctrine, any other law, any other boundary line, what if I said boundary line? Even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ and to the doctrine which is according to God in us, he is proud, the word proud is the word tufao, means to be blinded with a smoky haze. He's blind knowing nothing but doting about questions and strifes of words. The word doting just means to haggle. About strifes of words, whereof cometh envy, strife, railing, evil surmisings, perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds and destitute of the truth. Here it is. Supposing that gain is godliness. That's exactly, didn't Satan say, if you eat over there, you'll be as God. You'll be godly. Isn't that what he said? The word supposing is the word, what is the word law? No most. No most. The word supposing, here's the doctrine of the devil, is the word N-O-M-I-Z-O. It is a verbal form of the word law. It means to legalize. It means to make lawful something outside the boundary line of God. What he has done is he has taken all that's in the world and says, God knows you need all this. I don't know what God knows I need tomorrow. I don't know my needs. He said, I know what you have need before you ask. And the word ask is the word I tell, and it means you got to die to self before you can even start asking. Otherwise, you break the condition of the word ask. We went through that last week. We received the things that we ask when we do those things that are pleasing in his sight. We keep his commandments, keep his commandments is by agape, walking in his law, not our own. So the, if you'll notice, God's law and Satan's law never changes. They're in exact opposition. When you find the mark of the beast, it's a totally opposite to God's law. God's law says crucify self. The mark of the beast in his boundary line says satisfy the flesh. That's exactly it. It's very simple. 
if you stop and think about it. Why would God tell me, Jim, fulfill your flesh? Oh, yes, diet to self, too, by the way. You cannot eat at the table of the Lord. The table of the Lord was the altar in front of the tabernacle of the temple. That was called the table of God. What was offered at the table of the Lord was a sacrifice without spot, without blemish. What do we offer at the table of God? What's the New Testament altar? It is the cross. We're to give our bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. When he said over there in 1 Corinthians 10, 21, 22 there, when he's talking about you can't eat at the table of the Lord, you can't die to self and eat at the table of devils at the same time, he didn't mean I won't let you. He's meaning you can't fulfill the flesh and die to the flesh at the same time. You see what he's saying? There's no gray. There's no gray areas. You can't, you can't distribute the spiritual you, and the carnal. You can't do that. When he said you can't eat at the table of the Lord and the table of devils, the word devil is the word daemon, and it means distribute fortunes. How can you die to self and distribute fortunes and suppose and legalize? I'm, I'm saying whatever you have needs to be committed to Christ, needs to be committed to God. I don't know if he wants my house to burn down tomorrow and wants me to live in a tent. If that's what he wants, that's fine with me. Yes. That's what I'm saying. I'm saying we need to die to everything in our hearts and in our minds. Well, maybe it's, it's the way you feel about your possessions. Yes. It has everything to do with it. Yeah, I mean, what we need to do is not feel anything about it. Yeah. We need to say, hey, you need some shoes, take these. Take the ones off my feet. I've got some old ones in the garage. I'll wear those. I was going to put them in a garage shelf. That's called sacrifice. Don't give, don't give them the ones in the garage if somebody needs new shoes. Give them the ones off your feet. That's called sacrifice. See, if we really believe that, we would get this legalization of gain being God in this out of our mind. That is the doctrine of the devil. That's actually what's inside the mark of the beast. It's not going to be a fire-breathing dragon. The mark of the beast is already here. The good words and fair speeches are already being preached worldwide. It's already upon us. It was preached in the garden, wasn't it? Explain now, uh, for Revelation 13, 15. Okay, let's go on down here. Let's go, let's go on down here. Okay. Let's go back to Revelation 13. Revelation 13. You see, it seems somewhat elementary to say that, but since and God never changes, and God will never let Satan get in his territory, Satan never changes either. Evil is the same as righteousness. It doesn't change. It always feeds the flesh, says God wants me to have. Aren't there preachers in the world preaching that God wants you to be rich? God wants you to be healthy and wealthy and well all the time? That's, if I told my mother this, she said, well, I got a brother on the Big Charismatic Network, Dean Brown. And she said, Jimmy, Dean said, if he hadn't have found this doctrine, he would have never found Christ. I said, Mama, Dean didn't find Jesus. He found the devil's doctrine. She thought I was being mad. I said, that's the devil's doctrine that God wants him rich and well. I'm not being mad. I'm just saying that's not God's doctrine. That's supposing gain is God in this. And she just, Mama thought I was bitter. I said, Mother, let me define devil for you. Daemon. Distribute fortunes. That's the devil's doctrine. In the latter time, some shall depart from the faith, death to self, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Where's the devil's doctrine? In the Garden of Eden, in the mark of the beast. Unlawfulness, supposing gain is kindness. I don't know what God wants me to have. I do know one thing. He wants me to die to this flesh. That's what he wants. I would love to see my brother repent of that doctrine. It's a godless doctrine. For certain, we're not going to take one. No, sir. We're not going to take anything with us. When people say, what do you believe God wants you to have? I don't have any idea. He wants me to have what I have right now. Tomorrow he might want me to be broke. And whatever he wants, I'm to be like Paul when Paul said, I've learned in whatsoever state I am there with to be content. You know, everybody's looking for some mysterious thing for the mark of the beast. All you got to do the mark of the beast and Satan's doctrine ain't never going to change. It's going to feed the flesh. It's already a, alive and well. The apostasy's here, and Satan's boundary line is really set up. And when a man takes on the doctrine of feeding self, that's in opposition to everything. They take the definition of sin, the definition of covetousness, the definition of lust. 
It feeds self. It says self should have. God wants me to be rich and have uh, $500 alligator shoes and a $1,000 shark skin suit. And a, I don't know what God wants me to have. Whatever I've got at the time I'm existing, that's what he wants me to have. And one thing he wants me to do, if I have more than I need and I see my brother have need and I withhold my bowels of compassion from him, I dwell at the love of God.